This week's School of Knock, I'm going to talk about putting everything that we've worked on for the last several weeks all together. And this week's homework is going to be something that you may find right away. You may find it at the end of the week. But it's one simple assignment. What I want you to do is I want you to find one perfect 10. And what I mean by that is for each and every archer that I work with, I strive for them to find that one shot where everything clicks and everything gets put together. I want you to think about all the different elements of the shot that we've worked on. And I want you to think about each of those elements with all of your senses. And hopefully at some point during this week, you're gonna have that one shot where everything just feels easy. I've said it many times on the podcast that bad shots are often the hardest ones to make. And what I mean by that is when you make a poor shot, you're starting to break down. You start to have to try harder to get that shot to go. And normally it's because one of the aspects that we've talked about in these several weeks just aren't on point. So this week, as you practice, wait for that one time where just everything feels effortless. Because again, the good shots are not hard to make. The good shots are hard to find, but they're not hard to make because when everything that we've worked on lines up perfectly, you're going to find that a lot of times that shot even surprises you at how easy it happens. And when that does happen, I want you to go back and I want you to think about all the elements of that one shot and try to bring as many of your senses as you can to that and sometimes I even have people write that down because as we progress and as you start to go through either tournaments or events or more importantly as a hunter trying to make an ethical shot this is going to be the one shot that I have you go back to I want you to be able to mentally rehearse this shot before you have to make it, and I want you to be able to factor in all of those senses and all of those elements for the one time that in your mind you shot the absolute perfect 10. Now for me, I remember when that was. It was back in 1998. It was one of the first times that I felt my first surprise shot. I was using a hinge release. It was the middle of winter and I was dedicated and practicing trying to get away from target panic and trigger anticipation. And I remember it was a large McKenzie deer. It was at 40 yards. And I remember to this day exactly what my scope picture looked like. I remember the type of housing I was shooting. I remember seeing this lens that I had with a hole through it and a red fiber optic pin. And I remember that dot sitting perfectly on the 12 ring on that animal as I just focus on all of my elements and just waiting, pulling, and looking and just being perfectly content being in that pocket and having that shot go off. And I almost remember it felt so good and so clean that things just seemed to slow down. And I remember watching that arrow tick tock into the 12 ring. And from that moment on, I knew that that is the one shot that I had never truly felt and truly understood. Now, even to this day, when it comes time, when I know that I need to make a shot, and make a shot count, regardless of whether that's on a tournament line, regardless of whether that's here practicing all by myself, whether I'm at an archery shop or whether I'm in a tree stand, I like to mentally think about that one shot 
closing my eyes, which if you've ever watched me practice, sometimes you see that. And I'm trying to visualize how that shot felt on that one day 20 years ago. So as you practice this week, I want you to go through all of your steps and I want you to wait for that one shot to happen. And when it does, spend some time to think about it. Save it, lock it into your database, back it up on all your mental hard drives because that is all you will ever need to make a good shot. Visualization is such a powerful tool and it's something that I continually help people find their good shot even after they might be in a slump or they feel like they've lost it. So don't be afraid to write it down. And even if you're at work and you're not practicing at the range, you can still look at what that is. Now, thankfully today with technology, we can do this in our phone. If you're recording yourself, then that's even better because when you do make that shot, Edit it down, trim it down, and save it. Put in your notes on your phone everything about that shot and mentally rehearse those even if you're not at the range. Just because you're at work doesn't mean you can't practice. And mental practice and mental rehearsal is absolutely key. I call this finding your 10. What is your 10? What are all the elements of your shot that come together effortlessly so that you can put an arrow right in the center of that X-ring? So I want you to go through all of your steps. I want you to look down at your feet, your grip, point your bow at the target, think about your shoulder position. You're gonna draw that bow back. You're going to anchor, come into your peep, let off the safety, feel totally comfortable as you're pulling through that shot. This week, find your 10. It's all you're ever going to need from here on out. <laughs>